Hello friends, this is Dr. Ranjit Singh once again with you. In this lecture, we will discuss the nature and functions of drama. As you have already learned in my previous lectures that drama has a unique nature. It has developed and been improved upon by various dramatists over the ages. It has also been influenced by the developments and changes in the world. The unique nature of drama makes it possible for it to be read and also to be performed. Unlike the prose and poetry which depend on narration, drama is presented only through dialogues. The novel is divided in chapters and the poem is written mostly in stanzas. Drama is presented in acts and scenes, movements or parts. William Shakespeare made the five act structure the standard for his plays. Each dramatist is free to adapt his or her own style. In addition to the fact that plays can be read and enjoyed by people, in the privacy of their homes. People also watch and enjoy the plays as an audience in a theatre when the plays are presented on the stage. The audience gives an immediate reaction to the performance on the stage. Drama is temporary in nature. Every performance has a definite duration. Each performance of a play is therefore a distinct work of art. Even if the actors, the composition and the decors remain unchanged throughout the production, each performance varies in nature and quality as one may be better than the other. A good example is in a case where an actor may have performed badly in one production and better in another one. It means therefore that every performance of a play even by the same actors represents a different realization of its possibilities and no single performance can fully realize all its possibilities. Once a performance is conducted it ceases to exist except in one's memory. Ritualistic presentations could also be viewed from the same perspective. Now let's also look at the functions of drama. Drama is said to have originated from rituals. It is an important branch of literature and the most concrete of all art forms. It is devoid of the distinct intimacy of the novel the abstract masses of fine arts, the incomplete masses of music and the cryptic and esoteric language of poetry. It presents a story realistically through the actors to the audience. Drama is therefore used to entertain, inform and educate people. You can see that it is the most effective tool for mass mobilization by the government and private agencies. For instance, most campaigns against AIDS, drug abuse, child abuse and so on and on are presented in form of drama to educate, enlighten while at the same time to entertain the people. Of all the creative artists, the dramatist is in the best position to mirror his society and to effect social reforms. This is because his work has a unique characteristic of presenting events in a vivid, picturesque and realistic manner. This helps to imprint social conditions realistically in the minds of the audience. Its message is therefore immediate. The rich and the poor, the young and the old, the literate and the illiterate 
enjoy and assimilate the masses of drama once it is presented in the appropriate language. As the actors live out the story on stage. In most traditional societies, drama forms part of the communal rites. In Africa, reenactment of some feats like hunting, warfare, and other events are usually part of bigger festivals. Some of these events are presented in the form of drama to entertain the audience. In Greece also, drama formed part of a bigger festival. Greek drama is acclaimed to be the earliest recorded form of drama, 5th century BC. It is said to have originated from the Dionysian religious rites we have discussed in our previous lectures also, and also remain a communal rite during the classical period. The dramatists of this age gave insight into the philosophy and religious beliefs of the ancient Greece. These early Greek plays treated life's basic problems with utmost honesty and attacked social ills using legendary and mythological themes. This helped to ensure sanity and equilibrium in the society. In the middle period, drama was used to elucidate the masses of the gospel through the reenactment of the biblical stories during mass. It was later expanded to include the dramatization of the lives of the saints and other notable stories of the Bible that did not form part of the Sunday's lessons. It was therefore used for the spiritual and moral growth of the people. Drama and theatre also played important roles in the social lives of the people in the ancient Roman Empire. In England, Germany, France, playwrights like Shakespeare, Bertolt Brecht, Goethe, Moliere, and others in varying degrees used their works to enable their respective countries to carve out and affirm a unique identity for themselves. The American industrial sector was radically but positively affected through the intervention of one play, Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman. It was a very popular play. This play is regarded as being responsible for the spirit of industrial revolution in America. In Africa, Kenya to be precise, a playwright, Nakugi Wo Thiong, was arrested and detained because of the political and social consciousness which his play, I will marry when I want, aroused in the audience after the production. The play was written and presented in his Gaikui language. This enabled the audience to assimilate its masses immediately and to react accordingly. Nagugi was forced into exile. The drama of any society, therefore, reflects the problems, aspirations, philosophy, and cultural background of the people. You see, the dramatists can use their works to help to shape the future of the society. They can do this not only by reflecting the ugly sides of the societies, but also by promoting the positives the positive aspects of the people's way of life that are worth emulating or cultivating. They also help to ensure the continuity of their tradition and culture by reflecting them in their place. Each dramatist therefore tries from his perspective to use his art to enlighten his audience on the goodness, imbalances and shortcomings of his society. Apart from their thematic concerns, each dramatist in his own style of relaying his masses 
tries to highlight his cultural background through the use of myths, legends, music, songs, dances, proverbs, riddles, and other local expressions. In this way, dramatists all over the world are regarded as consigns of their societies and custodians of their moral and cultural values. Hence, my dear friends, you learnt about the functions of drama and the nature of drama. I hope you must have definitely got something so that you can understand how the drama is directly associated with the cultures, the religious festivals and the society at large and how this drama is used to enlighten the society through its messages. This is all for today. Thank you. Thank you very much.